third and the largest explosion happened in Sungai Bulo. The impact was so, so big until it has... Hey everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're doing good today because today I'm going to tell you about a story that has happened in May 7, 1991. Were you born yet? I was not born that time, but I'm going to tell you the story that I've read because it is very, very important in our history. This week marked the 75th anniversary of the Nagasaki and Hiroshima bombing that has happened 75 years back. And also, we are saddened by the recent news of our brothers and sisters in Lebanon. There's an explosion that has happened and has caused a lot of casualties and a lot of damages. So we hope that they recovered well and we hope more help can be given to them. Kejadian yang berlaku kira-kira jam 3.45 petang itu menggemparkan orang ramai, terutama penduduk kampung baru Sungai Buloh Selangor ketika itu. So, this event is called the Malaysian Hiroshima. It happened in May 7, 1991, where an explosion happened in Bright Sparkless Factory. So, this Bright Sparkless Factory is actually a fireworks factory. This explosion had killed 26 people and injuring 103 others. Some, until today, is still considered missing. Before we dive deep into this case, let's give you a background of Sungai Buloh. So I believe some of you watching this know what is Sungai Buloh, but do you know Sungai Buloh houses the largest and the most modern leprosy settlements in the world? So leprosy is a chronic infectious disease, so they need to isolate them in settlements. So the settlements is in Sungai Buloh. And right now, if you go to Sungai Buloh, honestly, there's three things that you will remember or you will come across. First is RNR Sungai Buloh. Second, is MRT Sungai Buloh and the last one is Penjara Sungai Buloh Okay, let's jump into the chronology of the case May 7th, 1991 At 3.45pm, a manager come chemist from Hong Kong named Long Tat Heng was testing out a firecracker in the factory He tested the fireworks outside a canteen in the factory premise When they test, it goes boom so, kesianlah orang yang dekat factory tu. Things went wrong when the firecracker launched and caused explosive chemicals from his experiment to split and caused fires that spread to the bazookas. This bazookas is actually the name of the firecracker that they are testing. 3.55 p.m., a chain of explosions started happening. So, at 4 p.m., the third and the largest explosion happened in Sungai Buloh. The impact was so, so big until it has four kilometers away from the factory and the smoke that's emerged from the explosion can be seen from about eight kilometers away to put into perspective uh, just imagine Persin Sebelah Sampai Alamanda or Persin Sebelah Sampai IOI Putrajaya so you can feel that explosion that impact from Persin Sebelah Sampai dekat uh, Alamanda ataupun dekat uh, IOI City Mall that is super duper far and super duper strong. The explosion destroys 200 houses nearby and the debris of the stones and construction materials flew as far as 7 kilometers. The people around there tell inside an interview they also feel like there was some sort of earthquake. Macam gempa bumi lah. Masa letupan tu berlaku. And this has caused a massive traffic jam. At around 4 to 5 o'clock, the bomba rushed to the location with 8 fire trucks to the explosion site. When it came, it was super duper devastating as they have mentioned in an interview in The Dead Tragic. When they came, they saw bodies lying around. So some of the body parts are burned, like 100% burnt, charred, and some are detached from their bodies. And some already like super duper unrecognizable because of the explosion. And some of them was also under the construction materials that flew during the explosion. A survivor described the incident as if he was in a Hiroshima bombing in World War II. Memang they say lah, padan jarak, padan terkuku. As you can see in the video that I'm going to show you after that. Umpama sebidang tanah yang telah diratakan, kesan gegaran boleh dirasai sehingga jarak 7 km tidak terjangka oleh sesiapa. The bomba wanted to save a lot of lives that time but it was like a ticking time bomb because they do not know whether there's going to be little pun susulan after that. So they orang macam takut takut lah. They have to find explosive storages before another another series of explosion happens. So luckily there was a survivor named Salima Chitman. She was a 19 year old worker that came to help even though she was traumatized by the event. Masa meletup tu, dia pun rasa macam oh I need to help. 
and luckily with her help she managed to recover storage of 30 tons of belerang or sulfur this sulfur is like you put in gunpowder for you to you know tembak tembak inside the you know snapang too and also sulfur is used to uh, if you got camping you letak the tepi tepi campsite so that there's no snakes there's no poisonous animal after 5 pm search and rescue operation happened so the bomber worked really hard 24 7 to recover the bodies of the victims and also save the ones that is still hurting or you know requires medic help so they discovered 26 bodies in which is still intact including the body of the manager which is the chemist that started this explosion so up until today they are uncertain how many people they are missing because they find a lot of body parts and the body parts are un is unrecognizable because they are tobacco and i believe at that time 1991 they might not have uh, you know enough um, tools like we have right now to start dna testing and whatnot and also they have no record of the factory workers day one until day three everything was normal but until at around 2 30 pm on day three things started go worse because the chemical reaction started to happen when the rain fall down so when the rain fall down and uh, how to say in contact with the ground that's already dah kena letupan tu so this how to say there's it releases this poisonous gas and this chemical reaction so this rescue team around 200 of them they actually have to evacuate the site because it is deep dangerous for them reported say that how to say they reported that they felt difficulty in breathing, swelling, itchiness on their face, hands and bodies. So they have to halt that for a while and when things started to clear up, they start again the search and rescue. On day 11, the search and rescue operation stopped and they only discovered 26 bodies and 103 victims that requires attention from the hospital. Why is this event important in the Malaysian history and how does it affect Malaysians today? So because of this incident that happened in 1991, firecrackers companies are required to shut down and the selling of firecrackers are considered illegal. Hazardous material unit team HAZMAT is also formed by bomber to handle incidents that caused by chemical and radiation like chemical spills, um, nuclear radiation and whatnot that has happened in Malaysia. And because of this event that has happened in 1991, the parliament has passed a bill, Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994, most commonly heard by the workers, OSHA 1994, to protect workers working in high-risk area. So, before I end this video, I would like to tell you guys to please take care of yourself if you work in high-risk areas like in factories or in construction places because malang tidak berbau. We do not want the incident that has happened in 1991 to reoccur back. So, before you go, if you like this video, click the like button. If you think this video is interesting for you to share, click the share button. And if you want to know more stories in the future about unsolved murders, about weird thing that has happened around us and also maybe about paranormal activities please subscribe to my channel so that's it guys i hope you find this interesting and have a good day